Hello, I'm Stephen Cooley and welcome to the Stephen Cooley Real Estate Show and I'm very excited to have Julie Storm back on the show on our 18th season. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. We've been providing real estate data for 18 years and we've seen it all, haven't we? Yes, we have. Uh, the ups, the downs, the uh, pretty absolutely. and the not so pretty. And now, now that we're into 2018, that Julie, we can definitely tell this is going to be an up year. That's awesome. Um, and um, it's a great year to sell your home and also to buy real estate, interest rates being so low. Um, rent continues to go up and so a lot of people are paying anywhere from a thousand to two thousand a month rent and when interest rates are so low that yeah. buys a two or three hundred thousand dollar house yeah you and I can remember when we bought yeah. our first homes and the interest rates were unbelievable yeah I think my they just dropped down to 12 percent from 18 yeah. percent and so my little sixty thousand dollar house back in 19 uh, 88 um, the payment was eleven hundred dollars on and that would buy over two hundred thousand dollar home today and so it's made the um, the price of homes even cheaper today than they were 20 and 30 years ago because what you pay for the house is a lot less important than what your interest rate is and so that just kind of leads me into to things I want to talk about today and I want to give five things that buyers need to avoid when they're buying a home and so the first one is buying on emotion and not your head. Mm -hmm. And I always compare it to going out and buying a car. Let's just say you got a family and you need a minivan. Right. And you get to the car lot and there's a red Porsche two door sitting there <laughs> and it just grabs all your attention. And a lot of the homes Julie built today, they've got these massive foyers and these big open plans and they've got these gorgeous kitchens but they're only 16, 1700 square feet. You gotta think about what your living needs. Yeah, you, and, and the more open the house, the louder it is in right. the home. Uh -huh. And so a lot of these homes that are new today, they, they, they're, they're, um, they're small, but they look really fancy like the red pores. Right. So the best solution to that is, is come up with a list of requirements, number of bedrooms, square footage, number of rec space, do you work from home and need an office, um, how many people eat at the dinner table? How many people eat at your breakfast table? And then write those requirements down, keep them with you and give them to your realtor, mm -hmm. who's a buyer's agent, and tell the realtor, keep me focused on the fact that um, I have, need four bedrooms and every child needs their own bathroom. Right. And then we'll keep you on track with that. Um, the number two thing is forgetting that there's another emotional party involved. When we go out and buy a car, the, the dealership or the manufacturer of the car is not emotionally attached to that beige car. Right. Um, the seller is emotionally attached to this home. They've got memories there. It, it's been a wealth builder for them. And when a buyer makes that offer, you've got to remember you're not dealing with a major national right. manufacturer of the product. You're dealing with another sometimes family mm -hmm. that is moving on and sometimes they're moving on due to job loss, job change, job transfer, not that happy about it. So you got to remember um, that there's another family involved or another seller involved in that. Number three is going it alone. Julie, everything's available on the internet today, yes. but the internet does not analyze data. And the internet does not tell you where a highway is going in or what school districts you may prefer based on the child that you have and whatever sports or, or other things that are important to that child. It doesn't tell you um, what the future is for a neighborhood or a city or an area. It only is just data. Right. And so you really need to hire a buyer's agent. We've got great buyer's agents on my team that cover all of our market. But um, um, doing it alone on the internet is not a good thing. Oh, it's a good person. source right. to use. Right. It's a good way to kind of get an idea of what maybe you want. But you definitely need guidance when you're in this process because I mean, it's such a big decision. Absolutely. This is somewhere you're going to live Absolutely. You're gonna, every day. So I, I mean. I bought a, vac a vacation home a few years ago and I used a realtor in that area. Then I sold the vacation home and I used a realtor in the area. So if I'm willing to pay them uh, um, for their expertise, I think everybody else should too. The fourth thing is just understanding the inspection process. You fall in love with a home and then you have an inspection on the home and you find out the home's not perfect. And you've just got to get used to that. Just like when you go on a date, you find out the person's not perfect, the home's not perfect too, and then we have um, things in the contract. One's called a due diligence period to where there's a time frame where you can say, okay, based on all my inspections, I'm not going to buy your home. 
And um, that is something that we recommend, just keeping in mind that everything about a home is repairable. And a lot of times the seller will make those repairs, especially if the damage happened while they own the home. So getting through that inspection process. And number five is understanding, most of us get a, an investor to help us buy our home. When I call them an investor, I'm talking about a mortgage company, right. a bank, and they lend up to 100% of your investment. FHA loan is 96.5% of the investment. So you're asking a stranger to step in and loan you pretty much all of the purchase amount. And then you have payments back to that, 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 that mortgage company. Understanding what all is available to you. Sometimes a veteran should not get a VA loan. Sometimes, even though you've got $100,000 in the bank, sometimes it's not the best idea to put all that down on a down payment. And so it's really understanding what all loan programs you qualify for and then which one best suits you. And again, that falls back on a great buyer's agent who can navigate through all those options and connect you with a great mortgage company that can explain to you, these are the five mortgages that fit your criteria and these are the reasons you should use each of those. And so those are the five tips for buying a home for 2018 to keep people focused on making sure this is a fun event. Yes. Um, buying a home needs to be one of the most exciting things oh, you ever is. do in it's life. So, it, is. it is so exciting. Uh -huh. So you don't want anything to go wrong with that. We've got these five tips and uh, we've got great agents on my team. Julie, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Love being here. All right, thank you. We've got beautiful homes for sale in your area. Please stay tuned, we'll be right back. I hope you've enjoyed watching the Stephen Cooley Real Estate Show. If you're interested in advertising your business on the program, please give us a call at 803-326-2777. Join us next week for more discussions on real estate topics and help in finding your perfect home. Thanks for watching.